Hello, today is October 18th, 2015, and this is Upgrowth Weekly 101 with QA number 17. My name is Lucas Oshman. My name is Steve Hong. I'm Max Danielson. And I'm uh, Anton. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, David isn't here today, uh, as you can probably see, which is weird because he's been on like every Overgrowth Weekly since the Q&A started, I think, pretty much. But um, Steve Hong is here instead, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> the David fair. replacement. And uh, you, Steve, you're uh, the, uh, a character concept artist that was hired pretty recently. And we, mm -hmm. I think we showed your portfolio on the show uh, last Overgrowth Weekly. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah. So yeah, so can you tell us a bit about uh, what it is that you're doing and uh, what you've been doing so far? Yeah, so I was hired to help update the character models. Um, so I've been basically starting from scratch, just doing anatomy studies, uh, trying to figure out how uh, best to differentiate between the racial uh, forms and also some gender differentiation. And I've also just been dabbling a bit in armor design and some more uh, character illustration stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it's looking uh, really cool. Like, you're really, really talented, which is, <laughs> yeah, you're just been posting the most amazing stuff. So, we're going to be showing some of that today, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know, should we do that now or should we wait until we uh, get to later on in the state of the game, maybe? What do you think? Uh I think we should. I think we should. We should just blow them out of the water now. Let's let's show them some stuff. All right, let's do it. Should I uh, get the screen share going? Is that up? Yep. Yes. Okay. So uh, this image here was before I actually got hired. I because my portfolio was sort of lacking and then these. Um, sort of anthropomorphic animal characters. I just want to show Jillian that I could actually design animal characters. So this is like the very first thing of uh, sort of study that I did. Um, just trying to get a feel for characters in different races. Then I moved on to some more just uh, exploratory sketches for the rabbits. Um, and then once I actually started uh, getting tasked with the with the uh, design work, I went in, uh, uh, race by race. Um, this is like very early on, so um, it's more just trying to get a feel for the animals, uh, trying different breeds of dogs, um, different breeds of cats. Um, and I know, I think Aubrey stuck to more like the house cat look. Um, I thought it'd be cool to just sort of give it the cats more of like a big cat aesthetic. Um, yeah, so these are some basic just front on silhouettes. Then I thought I'd try a more methodical approach because I noticed and other people noticed as well that I was um, sort of sticking to the same proportions. Um, I haven't really talked to anyone about like the fighting mechanics, mechanics or the balancing that's going to be done for the fighting. So I try to keep, you know, the leg lengths pretty long since kicking is a pretty big part of the game and all that. Uh, but this was an attempt to sort of be more analytical and just really uh, figure out what the different proportions are going to be for each race. Um, then I went into some more sort of natural posing silhouettes um, and sort of more uh, ideas for the gender differentiation. Um, I know uh, there's a few races that actually don't have female character models yet, but um, yeah. Really cool stuff. Like, are you going to are going to be posting these on Twitter or something? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get to post anything on Twitter yet, but I will. I will I'll get to that sometime soon. Um, and this is where I start actually exploring more individualized characters. Um, this is an idea I had for a uh, cat general. Um, I, I always really liked this this particular one because uh, it really did remind me that, you know, it's someone new drawing, but you're still sort of uh, staying in the color palette and the, mm -hmm. the scheme that 
the Aubrey's kind of set up so far? Yeah, I mean, Aubrey's been working on this for so long and uh, he's laid such a strong foundation. I didn't want to just, you know, I, I want to at least draw inspiration from his work. And I know that uh, for the cats, he wanted some more, uh, a little flamboyant, a little more um, sort of regal and, um, you know, aristocratic in their look. And I, I tried to bring that into this uh, design. And I'm sure for the rat one as well, like I, I heavily drew inspiration from his uh, rat character that he did with the some camouflage armor and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's great seeing someone, you know, continuing that aesthetic, mm -hmm. um, which I think has been, is watching you develop these has, has kind of, you know, I think it's been good. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have loved to talk to Aubrey a bit about his, um, his thoughts behind the visuals for the game and, and the different races and their, um, and sort of, yeah, their, their individual design um, ideas, but, uh, yeah, perhaps sometime in the future. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this last picture is amazing. I'd sat and looked at it for like 10 minutes when you first posted <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to, you know, play with some more, a uh, more narrative illustration. Um, I know there was some talk about a, a versus mode, and so that would be a great opportunity to actually design some more um, flesh out characters with their own individual personalities and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And also, this this particular image makes wolves absolutely terrifying. <laughs> and I think that from a you know story driven perspective, you know, having a pack of wolves hunting you like this, mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. like a co op mode or you know whatever, this would be a great um, you know a great way to to feel scared out of your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and I know the there were some ideas for uh, the wolves having like a lot of like scarification um, and sort of things like that to, uh, to individualize themselves. And uh, I'm really excited to actually start working on the uh, the, uh, the look for the, the wolves. So I'll probably work on that next. Cool. So, so can you kind of say what your task has been? I, I from what I understand, you're not actually going to be modeling is that correct yeah no i, I have no experience in modeling so um i guess it is for me uh for me it's just to to help the 3d artists to uh, flesh out the designs and create 3d ready um images for the 3d artists to work on or to work from yeah so i'll probably have to i, I was sort of um for the past couple of weeks or so just doing more illustration stuff like this because i have yet to receive much feedback for um, the model stuff that I've been working on, but I will probably soon go back and do more um, anatomy studies and just sort of flesh out the models more thoroughly. Um, it's still pretty, pretty yeah, still pretty early phase. Yeah, right. It's already like very, very good looking with all these different like, yeah, styles that you're showing and so on. So I think mm -hmm. it's going to. I feel like we're in very good hands in terms of character character art at this point yeah, thank you man. thank you yeah i can't wait to see you know yeah the models yeah <laughs> the model yeah, versions yeah. of them mm -hmm. yeah. so Great. um so let's uh, jump into the state of the game as we do from time to time, uh, which is every time. So uh, I'm gonna give first like an update on uh, the team, what's been going on in the team. So it seems like uh, Angela is going to be leaving Wolfire to work on her robots uh, pretty soon. Um, and she's been working on planning and game design for the game, so we'll have to figure out somehow to, uh, yeah, get someone to still actually do those tasks, the planning and game design. She's been very good at doing a lot of different things, so it might be hard, but uh, we'll have to do that. Um, and in general, like the team is still a lot in, in flux, like stuff is still going on. We're still hiring people and, you know, Jill just left, so we haven't really settled yet on like a structure and a good way of working, I think. Um, so we haven't uh, we don't really have full focus yet. Uh, I mean, David is still really, uh, really busy doing all this stuff, which I guess it's 
probably the biggest reason that he hasn't had a lot of time to give a lot of feedback on the art, for instance, that mm -hmm. Steve has been working on. Um, but yeah, that's going to like it's going to just go faster and faster as we as we get more into it. And uh, it looks like we might be hiring someone dedicated to planning and that sort of stuff, if there is enough related work to fill up that person's time, um, which should uh, maybe then replace Jill, hopefully. That'll be good. <coughs> that will be good indeed. So yeah, what have been we been working on in the past three weeks? Um, I guess I can start. So I've been working on the PBR post that came out like two weeks ago or something now, I think. And uh, after that, I've been working on updating the animation export scripts for Blender to work on a more recent version of Blender, uh, which has had, I've had a lot of trouble with that because apparently the way the matrices look when I get them from Blender is looking totally different now than it did back then. So I need to change a lot of stuff. Then I, I uh, and then I went to the US, so now I am in the US. I'm actually sitting where David usually sits during a regular season right now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty freaky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've been doing uh, these past three weeks. Uh, so Max, what about you? Well, um, to start with, I have been uh, active now for like, I don't know, is it my fifth week? So uh, largely, I've just kind of been uh, getting into the uh, systems that David have built um, in programming. Um, so what I've done so far is uh, I've fixed the debug rendering since we moved away from uh, uh, OpenGL 2 to 3. Uh, and I have done a lot of you can call it like house cleaning work, fixing bugs, uh, improving logging systems. I uh, added so that we do core dumps from Linux and uh, log files should be more useful now, um, being the way I am about those kinds of things. Uh, and I have been working on improving mod support. So there will be a um, first version of it coming out in the next version now, the next alpha. Uh, I'm hoping to get it as done as possible, but uh, my dream and wish is that it will allow mods to uh, be in the game without messing up the data structures or the, the data folder otherwise. Uh, having mods be more separate and you can disable and enable them, uh, making it easier for the end user to play your mods and for the modders to make and take care of their mods. Mm -hmm. Uh, what uh, is it? How is it going to work in, the, um, in this version? So, that's going to be released soon. So currently, uh, well, basically, uh, it, what it's going to be is we have a mod folder in our game, <coughs> and in that mod folder, you put uh, a new subfolder for each mod that you get download, and that mod folder has its own data folder, and then you have a little XML file specifying. Uh, how it should hook into the game, and uh, you can also specify what versions of the game it fits with, what version of the mod it is, and uh, what files should be explicitly overloaded from the main game. Uh, so you can kind of do a full conversion mod without having to over, like, to actually replace the files. And then uh, I, there is currently a menu in the game, uh, a button in the main menu, where you can enable and disable mods uh, easily, and like see which mods are available to the game. Um, and at some point, we are dreaming about moving some launcher into the game, but currently it's kind of coexisting. So we're trying to keep those up to date with each other. So let's move forward. So they kind of will like move over those features. And you and uh, um, Aaron, who designed some launcher, have had at least some contact about that, right? Yeah, Aaron, uh, who built some launcher with you. Um, Kind of. <laughs> kind of. I think you, I mean, this, uh, the project is in your name initially. Uh, <laughs> no, you've done a lot of work with it. Yeah, he, he, I have access to uh, everything he's done and I can look into what he's working on. And I'm, I'm like, I plan on trying to help with moving it towards what we want it to be. So definitely right. we, we're, we're talking uh, and he is uh, given approval of most of the things that I'm planning on doing. <laughs> That's good. I know that, uh, I mean, you know, my, my role in it has always been a little bit administrative and sort of, um, I don't know how to put it, like, uh, I hate saying that I'm like an idea guy because I hate being that 
because you know unfortunately i'm not i haven't been able to like implement a lot of things but i certainly have been there to help design how things should work and uh and i still did you know a lot of the actual curation of content so yeah and i know that from what i understand there is going to have to be some kind of update to all the existing mods to get them yeah. to <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, so what? What, what I'm the, the big thing I'm adding here is like this meta file describing how the mod looks or works to the game. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the sum launcher, I'm hoping to just generate that file for uh, the mods that currently exist. Okay. But in the future, the modders themselves are going to have to uh, make this, and it's very minimal. I mean, it's, it's trying to make it as simple as possible. And, of course. Yeah, while giving the modders the ability to. Uh, have more control. Right. I mean, like the dream is basically, uh, if you install a mod and it doesn't work, you can just remove the mod folder and you have reset the game completely to what the state it was before. Yeah. So that mods can't ruin your. Like there have been a lot of cases where people have had to reinstall the game because they're playing with mods, right? I mean, we want it to be uh, easier to avoid that. Right. Um, I know that some games for mods like this, you can even have it just be a, an archive, like a zip file, so you don't even have to extract it. Is that something that is you're looking into? Yeah, that's definitely on the map. I mean, uh, as it stands, it would be too difficult to implement. The, we need to uh, add support for uh, archive extraction, and I mean, zip is the most classic format for that. Um, so yeah, um, that is something I'm interested in. You should definitely look into doing that as soon as possible, actually, because I think that would simplify mod installation, you know, make it more opaque. Maybe there could even be like a, a general installer thing where you could just like, somehow I want to install this thing that I downloaded, like this zip file, and then it'll just automatically just put it in the right place. So you don't even need to know where to put it. Like you don't need to even navigate the structure. Yeah, maybe that's in, interesting from the idea. game or something like that. Maybe we right. could do some kind of file ending, like file extension, uh, like uh, recording in Windows, and have it react to those. Or oh, like yeah. our files. That would be even better. Yeah. But I mean, uh, the, the the main like the use the use case I'm seeing right now for uh, people who download mods is using some launcher. So that's already kind of hidden away. Right. And if and if we if we move the sum launcher interface or whatever downloading interface inside the game, yeah, it's even more like the primary way of installing mods. It's basically only modders who would be interested in playing with the file system uh, yeah. directly. And I mean, then archives are less interesting, you know, beyond the fact that they do minimize the the disk usage a little bit. Zip isn't the most efficient way of uh, compressing, but. It's better than nothing, and it can right. speed up uh, loading times too. Yes. So we have a question from chat. Uh, Rodeja twenty five asks, "Why is everyone so small?" And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm like uh, one meter seventy five centimeter. It's like it's pretty. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's I'm because about we're two meters. So. You're, you're two meters. Yeah, okay. Max is very tall too. So I don't know what you're talking about, really. Um, <laughs> Go closer to the monitor. No, but uh, we're testing out uh, Hangouts today, and uh, so far it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, because uh, Skype is trouble in general, I have, I have experienced. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Alan Haugen asks, have you guys made your own UI code? And uh, I think Max would probably be the best candidate to answer that. Our own UI code? Yes. Uh, I mean, we're using Osumium. Um, we have been since long back. And basically what it means is that we can make web pages, HTML pages, files, and then just interact with that uh, state. Um, so we're so using yes, a library. Yeah, I mean, we're using a library, but all the UI is written by us within the standards. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it depends on what you mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a hard question to answer straight. Like, it's hard to say yes or no to. Yes. All right. Um, uh, did you have some more things that you wanted to, that you had been working on, Max, that you wanted to bring up? Wow, I was talking about what I was doing. Um, <laughs> uh, it feels like so distant. Uh, no, not really. Um, 
I, I mean, it's it's uh, deep stuff right now. Um, I have been digging through the code base, fixing some bugs that you know should basically not even exist from the perspective of uh, the players. Like they shouldn't be aware of them more than you know necess necessarily. So it's not like, yeah, you look at I fixed this bug. Uh, I mean, uh, what I'm hoping to say is that what I'm hoping I can I can say is that the game is more stable from the next alpha than it was in the previous one. Mm -hmm. And I make a big point of trying to keep it that way as much as possible. Uh, cool. Trying to uh, make sure that we can easily uh, chase down bugs in the future too. Like that's the engineering part of me, and uh, that's just like uh, the mentality around it. Uh, mm. So, um, Steve, I guess you kind of went through what you what you've been working on uh, yeah. when you introduced yourself. But mm -hmm. maybe you could just like do a quick rundown again, or if you forgot to talk about anything back then. Uh, I don't think I forgot anything, but yeah, basically I've just been working on um, exploring potential forms for each race, exploring gender, gender differentiation, and exploring sort of more unique character designs um, and modern character illustration. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anton, what about you? Uh, so uh, I haven't been doing a lot on the game the past couple of weeks, but um, Miko and I have been working on the orchestra project again lately. Um, he's been finishing up his files and he's sending them to me. And uh, I had been wrapping up some of my stuff too. So um, uh, I think I have, I think I have um, two sections from him. He did four sections and I did two sections. So. Um, I have more than half of the track now that I can put together and, um, yeah, so, so we, uh, you know, we're moving forward with that. And, um, other than that, I'm just injured from a Kung Fu competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, is, do you have all of the like tracks that you need for the orchestra or are things still missing there? Well, there are there are still things that we are missing, but we decided a long time ago that um, it wasn't we weren't getting the specific things that we need. Um, some of our volunteers had suggested certain instruments that they could play, and then they never really got around to sending it back to us. So we um, we ended up just kind of mocking those up ourselves and trying to find ways around around that the best we could. Mm -hmm. So um, it probably probably doesn't make sense at this point to try and go back and get those last files. So yeah. Better to just wrap it up, we think. <laughs> All right, cool. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, the others on the team, uh, I'm just going to mention a few. I'm sure I mean, it's so big now, it feels like, so that I can't just mention exactly what everyone's been working on. But Keith Nemitz has been working on the world building, as, as he does. Um, when you say that, what do you, what do you mean by world building? So he's been like gathering information from all the lore and stuff like that that, David, that Aubrey has been producing, I guess, like the comics, and he's been talking to Aubrey about it and stuff, about like the world and like what like how are the races like what are the races what are their personalities what has happened in the past and the world and such so like just building up the lore in the world so that we have a more fleshed out base for, to base all of the stories uh, on i guess not to mention the designs will greatly benefit from yeah exactly yeah. yep i i know he came up with a, a timeline at some point which was looking yeah. pretty uh, interesting <laughs> it was <laughs> It's like thousands of years of yeah. conflict and yeah. that slaughter. And <laughs> yeah, I so. feel like uh, this sort of work is really important because it really helps everything except for the gameplay mostly. It that can help the gameplay even in some cases to like explain stuff and so on, but like it helps the art, it helps the music, it helps like the actual story stories that are told in the game and so on. So it's really nice to have someone doing this, I think. Exactly. That's pretty cool. And uh, then we have uh, Mark, Mark Stockton, aka Marcus, and uh, Josh uh, Akazi, who has been just keeping up the work on uh, those arenas that they've been working on. Um, Josh has also been writing some blog posts. Uh, he's gonna, he's written a blog post on thumbnails, making thumbnails for the Ugly Spotter, and uh, he's working on the Lugaro campaign. 
So hopefully we'll see those not too long on the blog. Um, and then Micah has also kept working on the arena gameplay that's uh, going to be released with the next alpha. Um, which will be released? When will the next alpha be released? Um, since we don't have David here, we can't like get a good... He <laughs> usually has all the answers to that question, but I get a feeling that we're very close now. Yeah, I mean, uh, personally, I would I like I would like to get uh, an alpha out only because like I want the bug reports we get to be a bit more up to date. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and it would be cool to see how uh, the new system, like how the way I'm logging stuff, like I see that in action, and you know to have people respond to the stuff we made so far. Uh, right. Really, is it's the call is on David, right? Um, but yeah, we're close to a release date. We've been discussing it. Uh, yeah, and in terms of uh, in terms of how often we release updates, uh, I think uh, we want to start moving towards releasing more often. Yeah, like try definitely. releasing more uh, like on a regular schedule, like every other week or something like that. Yeah, uh, sort of like we like it used to be. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's more possible now too when we have uh, more team members that we can try to always create something that is a feature for every new release. Yeah. So like even if I am just chasing something or doing iOS keeping or fixing bugs or building some back back end thing that requires a month, um, we can still have David or Mika or someone else building a feature that we can release, right? Yeah. But that's um, like that's the goal. We'll see what actually happens, and it might it might take a while. It might take a while before that actually comes to fruition, I suppose. Yeah, just like you said, we we're still kind of trying to sync up uh, or like you know get into the motion of things. Uh, we're still adding new members to the team. It's a it's a tumultuous process, uh, and we've just like you know it, it, like with projects in general, it's a pipeline, right? So, right. So we've we've shoved in a bunch of ideas just that we started working on into one end, and uh, as time moves, we're going to see them coming out of the other end. Uh, uh, in like in, in a like we'll see the results of them, and then we mm. can start making pieces of it. Because there's always that start stretch. Yeah. Um, I saw that you had Girth listed with some of his stuff too. Um, I was just going to mention I saw a couple um, mod things that he's been working on that may or may not get included, like some alternate game modes. Um, that he's he's done and he also showed off uh, just earlier today some um, animated objects where um, you know there might be some like triggers that animate objects within the game and things like that mm. that was looking pretty cool yeah so it's a really nice uh, feature that he uh, that he built uh, I would actually love to sh put that in the game the next release as a as a, as a template or example mod for mm -hmm. uh, other mod developers, because I think it makes sense to have uh, like running mods for other people to build upon so they can see how it's, how it's constructed. Right. Is he using the, the new mod structure to make that happen? Not that I know. I don't think, I think he's just doing uh, the standard, uh, like overlay the, the game folder, but I can't be sure. Uh, I, I don't see. even know what version of the game he's running right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I looked at what he, like how he set it up, uh, and it wouldn't be hard at all to make a mod out of it. I can probably put it in there pretty quickly. Uh, so if I have his, uh, I'm gonna talk to him. If I have his, you know, if he if he's okay with it, we could put it into the game as an official example mod. Yep, he says he's running 209. So 209, oh, yeah, okay, exactly. So I mean, we're currently working on what's like with 209 plus uh, roughly 600 commits. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of has happened since 2009. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's jump into the community questions for a while. We have already gone for like 30 minutes, but I guess we can take a few community questions uh, anyway, if uh, no one needs to be anywhere. Uh, I'm good. Yeah. Good? OK, cool. So I'm going to pick the last one on the list, um, because I feel like that applies to most of us. Since David isn't here, and he, I usually can answer all the questions. you know. So it's uh, Huey who asks, what is the feature that you're the most excited to work on? So <laughs> let's start with, uh, yeah, let's start with Max. Yeah. Um, 
So currently, I'm really excited about mod support. I think modding for Overgrowth is extremely important. Uh, it's a big part of what the game has been so far. Like, basically, modding has made the game interesting to third parties or customers. And uh, I think it's important for us to try to do as much as we can to make that easier and uh, a more a less painful or I mean a more pleasurable experience right so uh, getting the modding support that I've made out there and seeing how people react to it is going to be a lot of fun mm -hmm. what about you Steve like uh, it's, you don't work on features obviously but like what parts yeah. uh, do you are you most excited to work on maybe uh, is there a race that you like drawing the most kind of uh, I'm really actually excited about the rats actually because I just um, yeah I just feel like it's a great opportunity to add a lot of, I don't know, I just, something about the rats that I just like, I guess maybe the, the underdogs and uh, their CV, kind of, they're the ones that kind of are looked down upon by everyone. But I don't know if this will ever, ever be a feature, but I think the versus mode would be really cool for me as a character designer because you, know, you just open up more opportunity for like, uh, maybe you know, characters. And, yeah. 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 And versus mode is, is already really fun, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I still haven't played too much of the games. I, yeah, just spending too much time designing. And, uh, Sounds like we need to have a, a party and play some <laughs> overdress. <laughs> that, is, that is one of the best things about working on a game that uh, already has a functional uh, version before you even get into it, because, you know, you, you haven't been <laughs> long enough to get tired of it. So it's still <laughs> fun to start up to yeah. debug it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I played a bunch of arena. I kept getting disqualified because I would hit you know, people as they're down. You know? <laughs> oh, I've done that too a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen in versus mode. No. I just can't help it. <laughs> um, All right. Are we going to say something at all? Oh, well, I don't know. I, I realized that we might still be on this question, and I had seen some in the, the chat. That we could pay, maybe answer also. But, yeah, pick those. Yeah, uh, go for it. Well, did, did you? I mean, did you have? What are you the most excited to work on? All oh, right. <laughs> so. Uh, the team tuna, Lucas. Man, that's hard. I'm just in general excited to get the tools working well. I think, because like, I I I'm not happy with how the editor in the game works right now. So I would like to fix that. Though there is, like, no timeline for what I'm actually going to be working on specifically that I know like that I know that I'm gonna work on I just have a lot of things that I want to work on but I think yeah making the editor easier to work in it's like it makes me so so angry when uh, when <laughs> I, I select frustrated stuff really yeah frustrated yeah uh, when I select stuff with the same button uh, and move stuff with the same button and rotate the camera with the same button it's like that's just like why? Why do I do that? I mean, it's. I mean, it must be like the really old Mac, uh, the backbone from ten years ago, where it only had one button on the mouse, right? Yeah. No. Um, you... been a thing for so much longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, it's the classic thing to complain about, right? Uh, especially in a country where you never see a Mac. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone uh, where I live has Macs. It's, yeah, I know. It's, it, yeah, it's funny. It's hard to see PCs where I work. It really, like, you never see them. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen photos. <laughs> no, actually, within the academic world, uh, Mac has really gone through here as well. Off topic, though. Uh, I am also very excited about uh, you improving tools, Lucas. Uh, Lucas has a lot of experience working with tooling and... Uh, I think uh, the pipeline needs a bit of an overhaul to be more productive mm -hmm. in many aspects, both for uh, people working on uh, mods and people within our own team. Considering that we're so many now, it's like a big time save. Like if you can just shave off a couple of minutes on some kind of compilation step, that is manual labor, it ends up being a lot of uh, save time. Yeah, yep. exactly. So and frustration, uh, self-suicidal. <laughs> so how about you, uh, Anton? Mm, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm working on some music, and uh, I'm excited to implement some more music. <laughs> Is there any specific like 
aspect of the music that you're especially excited about or something? I'm I am actually excited to to f get some dynamic music in the game and understand how dynamic music will be loaded and and played because right now music is just a global element for the game meaning you can't even change it from level to level so I am really looking forward to having level specific music and within the game interactive music so um I'm curious how that's going to actually play out and I know that it's a combination conversation I have to have with Micah but it looks like Max has a he raised his hand can I can I introduce him? <laughs> okay, so, so I was going to say I have a finger in that system too and uh, you can actually make uh, requests <laughs> I yeah I need to finish some music to to make it happen first like I yeah. need something where I'm like okay this is how I want to yeah, do yeah. it and then yeah we'll so I am excited to make it happen. I just, uh, I need more time, um, which, yeah. you know, uh, now that this Kung Fu tournament's over, I, I have a little more time. So. Keep some music out of this, actually. <laughs> gonna uh, try. I'm gonna try, try. Keep, my, keep mine in the feature request section. No, but um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I love working on such things, so. Uh, we should make it more powerful to allow to have, we we're talking about layered music right mm -hmm. or uh, event music and there's already like a, some some of an idea there about like changing the music depending on what's going on so right expanding on that right so we have it in we have it in very very basic levels which is um is there i mean i think there's three right now it's basically there's a level that hasn't been won a level where there are no enemies and alive and then there's a you know music for when you're in combat so, um, but they're, they're global and, and not localized and, yeah, you know, right. that's another question is, I mean, one thing that David and I have talked about is music where it's, um, actually in the game. Like if you walk up to a person playing music, you know, is the music going to play from that location? We've also talked about in the arenas, having an area where the band might be playing. And so the music might be as if you were in the arena. So there's little things like that. Um, yeah. We have to keep it like, we, we don't want it to be too localized. Meaning no. we don't want it to be like, if you walk to the other side of the arena, you don't get action music anymore, but um, you know. Yeah, I could... mean, that's a really cool idea. Like you're saying, <laughs> if you have it to, on one point, it will be annoying when you're rotating to hear the music spin around, you can be disorienting, but like if you, if you have a vague like sense of it, that would be a kind of a cool thing way of putting it in the world. Exactly. So, um, and that has been informing how I've been experimenting with music lately. So, um, it's trying to bring that out a little bit. So, cool. so yeah, I think that uh, we have uh, gone for a bit over time now. So. We should probably wrap this up, even though we got through like one or three community <laughs> questions actually, because we took two from the chat also earlier. But oh, we should let's let's take some from the chat. I, I still have that? time. Yeah, come on, why not? I, I gotta be done by uh, by thirteen to leave here, so or by one, um, I suppose. Okay. So in like twenty minutes. Um. But we can probably take one more uh, for for my from my end or whatever you want to say. There, there was one that I'm kind of quickly want to respond to. There was like, uh, will you guys consider moving from Visual Studio to over to Make Files? We are already running CMake, and I am developing primarily on Linux. So uh, yes, and we have. <laughs> uh, I'm very old school that way. Uh, you can hate me as much as you want for that. But also, Mike uh, is uh, developing on Mac, right? Exactly. So we do have nice coverage there. He complains a lot about when I break things. <laughs> I love it. It's better that he notices it than, rather than uh, end users. So this is another better, good thing about having more programmers is that we now have one programmer in each operating system just like by chance, I guess. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. David, uh, it's Windows, right? So uh, one on each, which is great. Because those like standard like start break bugs, we, we, we noticed them without, in a couple of days. I find CMake horrible. Somebody asked if I think CMake is good. Not horrible, that's an exaggeration. It's not built for what we're doing with it, but it's relatively okay. Um, I like pre-make, but it's still in development. Sorry, taking over your turn. 
<laughs> give, I give the mic back. Do it, Anton. Questions? Oh, 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 me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, uh, I I was looking for for the one. Um, oh, there was one that I saw. It's still actually probably a, a question that Max can answer. Um, is will you switch from Osomium to Chromium embedded framework since Osomium isn't being developed anymore? I haven't looked at uh, Chromium embedded frameworks, but it could definitely be interesting. Um, we're running an old version of Osomium as it is already, and uh, there are a couple of pain points, mainly performance though. So if if performance was a like if we could get a, a big reward on performance by switching, it could be worth it, definitely. But Osomium currently is on, we're only really using the the HTML rendering for menus, right? Meaning it's actually a lot of a lot of content that we don't need by uh, using it as a framework. True, but it's uh, primarily that's what Osomium do. We do you actually use a lot of JavaScript in uh, in it too, like for, you know hooking in stuff. So okay. there's like the, the, the scripting engine runs as well. And Osumin has this weird tendency of creating a lot of threads that can sometimes die. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's just that I, it's, uh, it's a big obelisk of uncontrolled, uh, I don't know, cancer. This is a hard <laughs> word. Um, it's, it, I, I love the idea of building a new device with HTML though, uh, because it like allows us to bring in competence that we, we don't have to build our own competence. We don't have to build our own UI system. Even though, like, no, even not even though, like we, that's a really big win. No. It also makes it really easy for modders to create their own custom UI um, yeah. if they want to. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I it mean, has a lot of positives to it. Yeah, I mean, maybe many people don't realize it, but some launcher alters the the menu <laughs> just by running some launcher, and uh, we, it was easy for us to do because it was HTML. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see if there was another one or not. You guys talk while I hunt. <laughs> um, talk, talk, talk. <laughs> Are you doing a good job yet? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a terrible hunter. Um, all right. I don't. I don't see the other one that I was thinking that we'll ask. So maybe we can end it there. Yeah. Coolness. All right. So yeah. I would like to thank all of y'all for watching this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Uh, remember to check out us on Twitter. We're uh, at OG Weekly on Twitter and uh, OG Weekly on YouTube, uh, as well as OGWeekly.com to get to the archives where, the, uh, where you can see all of the previous Overlord reviews. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we will see you in uh, two weeks. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Yeah.